Every day, Renato puts his life on the line for the sake of others. More than 7,000 people have been killed since the Philippine government's brutal crackdown on drugs began 10 months ago. And every day, it claims new victims. Renato runs a community drug rehab program in the capital, Manila. He has vowed to keep each and every one of his charges alive, working tirelessly to fulfill his promise. But can he do it without putting himself in danger? Every morning, Renato takes a tour around his neighborhood. He is the drug enforcement officer in this community in Quezon City in Metro Manila. He wants to convince the known drug addicts here to come to the rehab sessions he runs every weekend. Tomorrow, Saturday at 10 a.m., I have reminded you so many times you have to be there. Sir, I might not be able to make it tomorrow. That's not acceptable. This is serious. We are now under the PDEA. I cannot cover up for you. I must report the truth. I have no proof that you actually work. You have to be there tomorrow. Don't mess up. Since President Rodrigo Duterte took office last June, anyone involved in drugs is essentially fair game, especially the poor. Many have wound up dead in the infamous police operations that ensued. Even more have been killed by vigilantes. More than a million hope to escape that fate by surrendering to the authorities. They then become eligible for rehab programs like Renato's. See? Now I have an assistant. Previously I don't have. I do it all own. Here in his office, he keeps lists of those who have surrendered but also the dreaded watch lists. Anyone who is believed to be selling like or here. even using drugs is recorded on them. Most of the names He's are supplied by other drug okay. users. That's our Once first, he gets uh, a name, Renato sets out to corroborate one. the claims. It's just given by the I don't want them to anyway, get in trouble. I'm validating their name first before I'm going to, we're going to proceed to open Tokhang. I'm validating it to the resource person, like uh, in the church. Your neighbors, around the neighbors, is, I'm asking them first if this is truth. They're a user, they're a pusher. Sometimes the neighbors said the truth. Eh. Sometimes they get mad uh, to their neighbors, the user neighbor, the drug addict neighbor. Yeah, that's true. They are addicts, they are users. So it's so already validated. They're positive using drugs. And Until mm. President Duterte recently put the Drug Enforcement Agency in charge of the and war they, on narcotics, the local police would show up at the suspect's doorsteps. No proper investigation, no court order, yet for many, having their name on the lists has served as a death sentence. But not on Renato's watch. So far, no one on his lists has been killed, he says. And he's promised those in his community who have come forward to keep it that way. That's why every Saturday, he invites them to the rehab program he himself initiated. And as so often in the deeply Catholic Philippines, religion plays a vital role here as well. I want to start the program by Bible study. They need to be fed, not by food. They need to be fed by the spiritual, uh, <laughs> the word of God. Because if you believe in God, Nothing's impossible. It can be changed. Many come here out of fear. Some still feel threatened and want to remain anonymous. I got scared because of the things that have been happening. It's no joke. What was happening is no longer a laughing matter. People are being killed. It might be one of them. I might also end up dead. That's why I came here voluntarily to surrender. Without funds for medical rehab schemes, hope and faith are two crucial pillars of Renato's program. As is physical exercise.
It's a basic setup, but more than what many other communities can offer, where drug victims are often left to fend for themselves. Renato, at least, gives them something to hold on to. I got to know God very well. Before I started attending Bible study, I feared no one. All I know is drugs. I almost worshipped drugs as my God. Drugs would not be able to save me, but the word of God can. It makes me better. I'm being given a chance to turn my life around. I've tried to quit in the past, but it didn't work. But now I'm able to truly quit drugs. Renato keeps a precise record of attendance in order to protect the participants. Uh, this is like uh, your driver's license. Uh, this will, they will carry this every time, any time on their pocket. They got to call it. If they were still on the watch, this if there's some police came to them, they will show this that they already surrendered. This is the assurance that they are undergoing the program of the barangay. This is the assurance. Renato hopes for a future without drugs. Drugs tear apart families, as does the drug war, too. I see some families, their husbands have been killed. I see them they're crying in the TV. That I don't want to see like that. If I can do better, I will do it. Well, that's why we assigned here. We assigned here not for the salary. I'm assigned here to do my job, to help them, and for the future of the children. Renato has children of his own. He wants them to grow up in a drug-free environment. At the same time, he knows his job on the front line of the drug war also puts him in the crossfire. I knew all the personalities, uh, drug personalities around our communities. I knew their name, I knew their, their faces, I knew that they are on the watch list. Maybe they're going to do something so I, I can forget it, all of that. When I accepted the job, I already expected what What's the worst thing should happen to me? I expected it. I already fit myself to a coffin and try and take a picture with me. <laughs> I take a selfie inside the coffin. So I'm looking at myself inside the coffin. What's, what kind of, what is my place when I die? I will love this Neighbors often warn me when we're out together on the motorbike. They say it's dangerous because of his job, but I don't care. When your time has come, then you have to die, one way or the other. I wish that uh, if anything happened to me, the one who I'm helping right now, the surrenderers, if I die, maybe all of them will help my family also. That's my wish. That's my only wish. But that doesn't mean he won't do whatever it takes to keep himself safe. Some areas he only enters with the police and a bulletproof vest. It's for my own protection, it's too risky to go inside. Maybe some, uh, some people identified me already as the head of the anti-drugs in our barangay, in our community. He's afraid some people here might see him as an unwelcome visitor disrupting their business, or even as an informer pointing the police to them. He has received death threats over the phone. You will die tomorrow. You will, uh, if you want to come with the... You will be with Satan as soon as possible, <laughs> something like that. I'm ignoring it. Eh. I might get depressed and stressed. The drug war hits the poor hardest. At least 15 people have already been killed in this neighborhood. And every time it happens, Renato has to come here to make sure the victim is not someone from his lists. Some of the addicts who are taking part in Renato's program also live here. But he can't get in touch with them directly, as it would put them in danger.
anyone who speaks to the authorities could be seen as potentially blowing the whistle on others. None of the addicts wants to talk here. It's only in the safe environment of Renato's program that they agree to an interview. They speak of a state of constant fear. Sometimes I find it hard to even close my eyes. That's why we prefer to be dead tired from work when we get home. As soon as we get home, we just crash. Sometimes I feel like we're being followed. I would tell him, love, we're being followed. But when we stopped walking, they would just walk on. I rely on my instinct. My instinct would tell me if something was wrong. If you let everything scare you, you will lose. Renato is determined to relieve people's fears and give them encouragement, even if that can mean endangering himself. I'm, uh, I'm committed. I swear to do my job. That's one. Like the policeman, that's their call of duty. <sighs> never. A duty that means he never gives up. And he never gives up on anyone, as promised.